James, did you not write down your notes this week? You're just hoping to memorize them? No, uh, I you wrote- You going off book? Starring Zach Reno and Jessica McKay? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I wrote down my notes a week ago when we were supposed mm -hmm. to record this episode. Yeah, and, and then, then I you fell scared me because you I did didn't respond for an entire day. I didn't respond for like a whole day. No, it wasn't a whole. Was it a whole day? Uh, Sunday, yeah, because uh, I thought yeah. something might have happened with you mentally. So uh, because of I mean, that's Facebook also posts true. that you had made. Not yeah, my like, friends, my friends dead, and it's sad. Yes, so I was like, "Is Sean going through something?" So yeah. I even I messaged Shelby, and I was like, "Have That's you true. heard from him?" Because oh, okay. it was truly more than twenty four hours before our like or after our record time. I was like, "Uh, I hope he's okay." Did he manically yeah. just like go to Buffalo? I don't know where this friend is from. I assumed from the yeah. New York area. No, he's from Buffalo. Bruce Wilson uh, is the funniest dude I ever met, and I miss him. And I miss you, Bruce, in the ether. And I'm sad. Welcome to Sweaty Times Pro Wrestling, bitches! <laughs> and I also, I wrote all these in the throes of COVID, so I don't know. You're coming off of COVID, buddy. How yeah. was that? Oh, oh it God. sucked. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Because I not only did, you know, it's COVID and COVID sucks. Like, if I didn't have the vaccine, it would have been worse than that. Terrible. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was in Florida for too long already. Like, we, we had a very long trip. So I, maybe like three or four days in, I got COVID and then I had another four days of just being in a room in this condo with no one else because I was the only of the five people to get COVID. And Nicole Dude. and I were sleeping in the same single sized bed. We kissed. We did. So luckily, she didn't get it, but it was you insane. You and Nicole are kissing now? Uh-huh. We're going. What? We're snogging and going steady. Oh, my God. I can't. We're pinning over here? I'm shocked. And we're I'm pinning? So, yeah. When you would put a pin on your on your special oh, gal. okay. And everybody knew, hey, that's my property because it's 1957, so women are my property. And because I put a pin on her. I Isn't thought, it romantic? Because you're so into wrestling, like that's what you call having <laughs> sex. Like, yeah, you guys are pinning each other, right? Yeah, I might. I might. Hey, yo, what's going on? All, all the jugglets that carried over from the last podcast, and by all the jugglets, I do mean Margie. Oh no! I, don't <laughs> don't don't, don't try to pin my mother. Let me pin in your any mother. sense of the what? terminology. All I right, don't think she fair. listens to this show. I can't imagine she would. She has better taste than that. Actually, my my mom <laughs> loves WWE. Well, fuck the WWE because here at Sway Times Pro Wrestling, uh, we're talking about Lucha Underground. Are we? You sent me fucking videos to discuss how shitty of a commentator Matt Stryker is. But before we get to how shitty of a commentator Matt Stryker is, I wanted to do a little bit of context. So I sent James a little bit of research. Mm. Because okay. I wanted you just just to know like what I'm going to talk about, maybe. I don't even know if we'll get there, but I want to have that avenue. But we're jumping ahead all over the place. Welcome to the podcast where me and James ooh, ooh, go through wrestling and all sorts of cool shit. Ooh, but ooh. also, uh, including in all that sorts of all sorts of cool shit, man, the motherfucking underground, you sexy sidewinder. It's out there in radio land. Wow, is there is a that, disguise? That's a new this one. This is proof of concept or just proof of being friends mm. with Sean that he does not read any messages you send him. No, you sent me something about we're not doing that this week, didn't uh, yeah, you? Yeah, we're not doing Unearth the Underground Fucking because beauties. not only do I have COVID, but I had under two weeks to record three weeks worth of podcast. So I was like, well, I don't have time to do that for these two large reasons. That's and okay. Yeah, so we're not doing right, Unearth the Underground. No, right. You know what? I, I'm doing Unearth the Underground real quick. We're doing. I'm doing it on the fly. I would also like to say, uh, yeah. clear. okay, so this is actually better that Sean didn't read, hey, we have not to keep the shows shorter these next two weeks because of yeah, yeah. my time management. Because then Sean sends me like, hey, here's a bunch of shit. We're talking about things that aren't related to Lucha Underground. 
Well, okay. Well, I, uh, I can't believe I'm going to have to cut my underground segment this week so we can talk about what's going on. The uh, subheader title of this episode is uh, Mad Striker Can Suck a Dick. Because I, I did not like Mad Striker's. I'm sort of uh, foreloading this. I don't know your opinions on Mad Striker's commentary duty this week. We'll get into like my specific notes against him. Did you pick up any like, yo, I kind of fucking hate this Mad Striker guy. I don't, I didn't really, I did forget. I wanted to start this episode by saying my brain lumps, much like my budding cum gutters, have smoothed due to COVID. Yay. Because <laughs> truly the day I got COVID, I, my cum gutters yeah. were like full in force. I was like, holy okay. shit, oh. I'm hot as hell. I can't wait to go to the pool and show awesome. these off. So Nicole's yeah. like, mama mia, that's some opposite of diarrhea. It's coming out the front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I'm not just mad that you said those words. I'm mad that they led to something, that there actually was a pretty decent payoff. Uh, opposite of diarrhea jesus the wrinkles in my brain have been steamed (laughs) out due to massive fever oh no james i had 105.5 fever one day would you rather one of your dear friends and comedy writing partners in your uh, very informative early to mid 20s die and then i have covid do you want a freaky friday this because no. my brain has also smoothed uh, <laughs> because I this dude was a year younger than me and also much funnier than me and also loved to do cocaine and drink. Uh, so that was very, very sad. But I also already had COVID, so I don't know if I want COVID again. Yeah, don't get COVID again. It sucks. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was going to die one night. All right. I'm not going to lie. I had 30 minutes planned for us Freaky Fridaying our last two weeks of drama. Oh, man. Cause, uh, but you just, you just no-butted that. Yeah, I thought I was going to die alone in a shower because everyone else went somewhere. I talk about this on one of the podcasts Nicole and I do of, hey, if yeah. you have COVID, don't downplay it and be like, I'm fine, guys. But I was trying to make sure that they could still enjoy their vacation because remember, Florida mm isolated truly alone i'm truly alone like that icp song yeah i listened to that i'm sure you did it was on hell's pit i think i liked that one we did yay i remember the things i do i read messages you do not um, do that i do Absolutely. not read messages nah uh i've been it's been hard to get a hold of me for the last week also do you want this this we're about to get into him do you want this rick flair book yeah, Rick Flair. Rick Flair's dope. All right, hell I yeah. I would read that. Yeah, James sent me a picture uh, that I saw today, and I was like, I'm running around. I have a meeting after this. Bah, 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 bah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Rick Flair to be the man, which is, I'm assuming, a quote autobiography. Uh, Maybe. Because I don't think that I don't think that dude can sit down long enough to write his own book. He, like my uh, late friend Bruce, loves cocaine and alcohol and women. So I thought why you sent me this video of uh, are we getting into it yeah so i sent james uh, and what i sent james uh is 2014 uh i found this article on cage side seats the state of commentary in wwe which again like i as the episode goes on i'll get into deep kind of like my issues with matt striker here but 2014 i didn't want i didn't want to come out come at a dude from a 2022 perspective with like zero context mm-hmm. So I dug around and act 2013, like late 2013, 2014 is a very strange year, specifically in commentary for the WWE. And at that time, that's really wrestling as a whole in America, because it is a a, a void. That's not a void. I was going to call it a void of talent, but that's not true. There are Mm -hmm. great people doing cool things, but it's just this weird monopoly. TNA isn't a big deal. And yet, and just, it's this, it's this strange sort of moment of time in professional wrestling commentary yeah yeah so i sent james uh that state uh the state of commentary uh that article that cage side wrote cage cider wrote and then kind of what leads to it because the article doesn't mention it good old jim ross a personal friend of mine Uh on the i forget what podcast he showed up on i believe it was 
a couple episodes. Of, it had to have been this. It could. No, no, no. It was, no, it was <laughs> shuffling the deck. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Jim Ross, personal friend of mine, was fired in September of 2013 after the for kind of the dumbest thing oh yeah yeah like a very dumb thing uh for what had happened was in SummerSlam, a major pay-per-view for the wwe the summer fest it's the summer fest if you will uh the night before they are shilling they are hawking they are selling the uh, wwe 2k14 video game much like a nintendo or a game boy even a crash bandicoot this is a video game meant to simulate what it's like to be a professional wrestler in the year of 2014 james you are shaking your head i thought you were gonna say like a nintendo direct or something that is actually like what i watch i'm not everyone knows what a video game is james i'm right. being inclusive uh but it but it's but it is supposed to be a sort of a nintendo direct this is supposed to be a, a, a roster announcement, apparently. Mm -hmm. You would not get that from this video that is posted in full on WWE's actual YouTube channel, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is wild. It's so not good. <laughs> I'll be honest. I w you said it was because JR did something. You could have said, like, hey, James, here's, here's more reasons to add on to why you hate Ric Flair. <laughs> It's also, it serves a double purpose. That it can be dude both. fucking sucks. He's really bad. That's why I'm curious to read To Be The Man, because I'm sure it is very fluffy. Oh, yeah. Like, towards Rick. I'm sure it is wonderful and does not mention how, how this man does not have, like, a bazillion sexual harassment lawsuits at any given time is beyond me. Yeah, because also, like, things he was saying was just dirtbaggy during this conversation. Yeah. I mean, so I sent James a seven minute version, like sort of someone clipped together the highlights. Mm -hmm. And I also, if he was interested, I did not expect him to watch it. There's an hour and a half an, or an hour and 15 full length version. I'm glad I clicked on the compilation first. Yeah, I will say I don't read messages, but I did clarify in my message to you. Don't click this one unless you want to see a full version of a mm -hmm, clip. Mm -hmm. This is the full, it's very long. But so is the, but it's a, it's a it's a press conference where Jim Ross brings on it's Dolph Ziggler, Daniel Bryan, Rey Mysterio, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mick Foley, Paul Heyman, and Ric Flair. And again, it, it's just supposed to be like, hey, here's some here's some like softball questions. Let's kind of let's let's just sell the game. And it's Ric Flair is a train wreck. Oh yeah, we'll say that up top. Ric Flair is hammered. Ric Flair is rambling in stories. It's weird because they are. If you're into like the history of wrestling, they're fascinating stories. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the dude did headline the collision in Korea the first time any non-North Korean stepped foot in North Korea in something like 30, 40 years. Yeah. The, and like was the was the face of the NWA to the W. Like he has a wild career. So the stories are good. He's just kind of a scumbag. The big deal with this this whole press conference, though, Ric Flair was not on contract. He had this weird, like, Legends contract where he just sort of yeah. showed up and got paid for no money. Jim Ross was an official. He was a work. He, he was an employee of the WWE. He was the voice of the WWE still. And they are both drunk. They are both visibly drunk. What you don't get in the seven-minute clip that I sent you was the nearly 30 minutes it takes for Jim Ross to bring all six of those men onto stage with him. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not supposed to be... Like, it's so... He's very... Jim is also very rambly and makes some real questionable comments. Okay. Like, yeah, like some real questionable comments kind of throughout. And is just like... Like, there is no reason it should take 30 minutes to bring on the people who are there to sell the game. If they wanted to reveal roster stuff, they should have gotten Masahiro Sakurai to do it. <laughs> he's, yeah. the, he's the Super Smash, Smash Brothers, Brothers of yes. Of course, the creator of Kirby, yeah. yes. He should have come on, he should have floated his little, cute little pink butt on stage, slurped down some enemy juice, mm -hmm. and gotten the fire, and gotten Fireball Bomb. Yeah. He could have inhaled mankind and then he would have like, oh, my God, Kirby as mankind. That's what someone needs to draw. Kirby as mankind is very good. Just Kirby, Kirby as, as different mankind wrestlers. Is very good. We get Kirby. Oh, my gosh. Kirby. 
Kirby as no, you know, but specifically Kirby man, as mankind is the tattoo. No, Kirby as Socko. That's just a sock, though. Yeah, but he'd still be cute. Not as cute as mankind. Could Actually, be. it might be terrifying because it would be like a stretched out sock. He would look like he's about to rob a bank or foil Batman's plans, which is kind of cute. Yeah. Fo- foily- foiling the caped crusader that's adorable behavior yeah like he's about to spray some fear venom in batman's face hmm i'm gonna spray you with my fear venom and by Ooh. foil his plans is just like his plans to go to a benefit that week because he is going to be fucked up from this fear toxin oh yeah my dude is a pusher man but so through this terrible debacle and it's, and it's weird because parts of it are very interesting. Like, if this was a podcast roundtable, like, hey, Ric Flair and all some of these other guys, let's just talk about your careers and, like, what does WrestleMania mean to you? Mm-hmm. It, like, parts of it are very interesting, but it does not sell the video game at all. Yeah. Like, to the point where Paul Heyman, who's on stage, walks up and rips up JR's... You can see Paul Heyman... Firing Jim Ross in his mind Mm -hmm. in real time. It's ridiculous. And it's, wow. The thing about a podcast is you could edit around all of the bullshit. Oh, man. An editor would have such a shitty time doing this. 30 minutes. It takes him nearly 30 minutes to get everyone on stage to actually begin the press conference. You want to, I should, I should do this. I should download the audio of this and edit it to like, it's an hour 15. I could probably get it down to 45 minutes. Pro- and, it will pro- and it will be some really cool Ric Flair stories. Ric Flair talking about being the last survivor from his Randy Savage match at WrestleMania 6, is that? WrestleMania 8? No. It's, I forget, it's, a, it's a beautiful match, and it's, it's this weird, it's this sad portrait of, a do- of the last survivor of a very powerful moment in professional wrestling. That would be cool. Jim Ross talking about how he saw Dolph Ziggler's wiener on Twitter, Mm -hmm. which he didn't. That's not a real story. Jim Ross was just like, oh, I got a good joke. I'm going to talk about your dick. Hey, welcome to my stage. I'm going to talk about your dick. Like, okay, Jim. All right, Jim. We got to let you go. So Jim Ross is gone. This is a long way to say Jim Ross in 2014 has been fired from the WWE. Yeah, out of here, Jim. Uh but that's the call. That's the, my, by God, he's broken in half, you know? So we're left with Jerry Lawler. Boo. Yeah, that guy sucks and has sucked for a long time. Professionally and personally. Yep. Uh, John Bradshaw Layfield, who also sucks, allegedly backstage, a big old bully. And Michael Cole, who recently has been gone through this really kind of cool renaissance Oh, and the fourth man in the article, Vince McMahon. By now, it's kind of, it's very apparent that, especially after the firing of JR, Vince McMahon is is micromanaging the announce team. Mm-hmm. He is in, he is he is the silent voice in their ears, and it's so funny to see Michael Cole now without Vince McMahon has been on fire on commentary. He's passionate. He's knowledgeable. He's been with the company twenty years, but he's also pulling in knowledge from. Other companies like, oh, yeah, these guys were huge on Evolve, which is now on the Peacock Network. Or we'll mention New Japan and uh, Ring of Honor and like other big name promotions that aren't associated with WWE, but informed a wrestler's career. Mm -hmm. Like Michael Cole feels like and, and again, he's invested. He's passionate. He's really into it. That was not the case in 2014 where he's literally just bowing the head to Vince. Yeah. And just like there's a very famous clip of, of him in between like during a commercial break on SmackDown going, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. But I didn't know if you wanted me to say that every time. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. OK, I'll say it every time. Like at one point, I'm pretty sure he calls Vince daddy. He doesn't actually. But in my mind's eye, <laughs> he very much does. But so that so before I really have a problem with Matt Stryker, I, I guess I guess I'm just trying to say wrestling commentary everywhere is kind of bad. But I will say Vampiro in this episode Kills starts it. it out by saying, what up, ninjas and ninjets? My dude, <laughs> juggle living for life. Let's get into episode five of uh, Lucha Underground. Oh, my God. I didn't write the name of the episode. It, oh, it was uh, Boyle, uh, Boyle Heights Street Fight is the name mm-hmm. of the episode. 
Uh, Sean, have you ever filmed something with one of them light dongle things? I filmed things with my dongle. <laughs> I don't remember. Wiener can. It's when wiener camera, wiener camera, wiener camera, wiener camera, wiener camera, wiener camera. All right. Anywho. It's one of those, <laughs> it, you, when you have a stage light and you put like a pattern on it, they do it that way to, in film noir, noir, to make it seem like someone's looking through blinds oh uh probably not that one not that specifically uh but that sounds cool okay i just they, they were clearly doing that in this episode yeah that's again and one of the cool things about lucha underground is that they're not taking this it's just wrestling so it doesn't have to look good mentality mm-hmm. Like it's, which is the same kind of like, if you'll see like a lot of sketch shows, they'd be like, oh, it's just sketch comedy. It doesn't have to look good. And then, you know, something like Key and Peele came out where it's like, no, it can also look good. Yeah. We're allowed. And Lucha Underground is kind of the Key and Peele of professional wrestling. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you want to know, I want like whitest kids, you know, style where when they're on a green screen, you know, they're on a green screen (laughs) because it was poorly lit and you can see the green light bouncing onto their skin mm. who needs uh, who needs anyone who, who needs a film director when you have buttholes and hammers they go I, I i remember hammers i don't remember a lot of ice kids you know i might go back and watch that I'll, it's I'm very good get, it's no, like every time I'll, I'll click on a like a series of clips i'm like I should remember these more. This is a fun time I'm having watching it. They started posting on their official uh, YouTube before Trevor passed away a mm-hmm. like whitest kids you know commentary like they would they, they would post mm-hmm. the sketch and then the day later they would post them discussing how it was created and the hot dog one of so uh it, Yeah, remind Timmy, me of the hot dog one. Timmy, uh, how how what's your diet like? And he's like, well, you know, I wake up, I I eat a hot dog. Okay, okay. Um, do do, do you have do you are you eating any more hot dogs? And as it like goes throughout, he like reveals that he's eating like eight hot dogs a day, <laughs> and how that sketch came about. Also, the you are my child, my bride. bride. I am your father, groom. The story behind that is insane. Oh no, because that sketch is also insane. Yes, uh, songs from the old times or mm-hmm. whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, I hate that. I, I'm like, oh, remind me the hot dog one. As soon as you said child, I immediately jumped in. Uh huh. Uh huh. I jumped in a little too quick. If yeah. I'm, if I'm honest. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, well. You know, it is what it is. Um. So yeah. So uh, I guess TNA would be the whitest kids you know. Where like, there's some great talent, but clearly there's there should be a director. There could be a director's eye that could serve these sketches even further. Yeah. AJ Styles is Trevor. But like, and Lucha Underground is just straight up key and peel where it's like, no, we have, we got the talent. We got, we got the stuff that makes it good as a wrestling show, but also we're using, we're trying to film this in a way that's watchable. We got one of those light dongles. We got light dongles in Lucha Underground. Real, uh, uh, I was going to bring up the dark matches, uh, real quick. Uh, just Phoenix, uh, is in the, is in a dark match versus El Mariachi Loco. We love Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a, he's a good flying boy. And, uh, Pippinella Escarlata, which we, whom we have not met yet, but we will meet eventually, defeats, uh, Pentagon Jr. No! Whom, I know, I also love Pentagon Jr. But Pimpinella Escarlata is very cool. Uh, we will meet them one day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Before we get into like non-dark matches, I do want to inform everyone, if you are looking forward to the Vampiro Warrior of Night or whatever that movie is called, the Straight to Patreon, which, hey, join patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. We have to do that at the end of October because of me getting COVID, Sean can't come over. Yeah. And also <laughs> we already talked about it, but I cannot we cannot overstate how fucking dope it is <laughs> that the ultimate juggalo, the superior life form of juggalos everywhere, Vampiro, opens this show with what up my ninjas and mm-hmm. my ninjets. Yeah. For life. Vampiro is juggle living for life. And yeah. that Oh, it makes me so happy. Even the, 
I forget which JCW I was watching, uh, but the one where like, because is is JCW events at the gatherings are usually bloody manias are usually pretty goofy. They don't take themselves too seriously, except for this one promo where Vampiro's just like, no, I've been here. I've been to the gathering multiple times. This is my home. Mm-hmm. And if fuckers want to come into my home, they're going to have a problem. Because yeah. I will defend you because I love you all. I'm like, Jesus, like Vampiro is so real on it. And it makes me smile to this day to no end. Yeah, this is the type God. of stuff that like, it makes me want to see this movie even more. Like this man mm-hmm. was a, he was technically so big. He was a movie star in Mexico in 1994. Yeah, I mean, Vampiro is a bit, he's no Conan as far as, but like nobody's Conan. Conan's kind of the Hogan of, Conan's AAA, I think. Gosh, if he's CMLL, I'm going to look like an asshole. Uh, but Vampiro is a is a major, major star. There's a reason DC, WCW were so, WCW put him, A, with uh, ICP, who like sure weren't wrestlers, but were absolutely draws for oh, the yeah. time they were in WCW. Like, they trusted Vampiro to work with ICP and against Sting. Like, a dude who's been, like, your top babyface since the late 80s. Yeah. Like, they, like there is a reason WCW trusted Vampiro, because Vampiro is beloved. And is also, outside of the Juggalo reference at the top of the show, I think does a great job in this show. Yeah. Like, I physically struggled with some of Matt Stryker's calls. Uh, but Vampiro brought me back. I'm looking forward to see what specifically you were saying because, again, I mm-hmm. a lot has happened this week. I watched it truly got- seven days ago, very yeah. early in the morning. So I'm excited to see what you're going to say. You got your brain smoothed by the Roni. Sure did. Let's get into I'm guessing it starts not with a match, but like that one dude talking to someone. So we open up in uh, Dario Cueto's office with our boy K Dog, mother effing Conan, breaking it down. Puna wanted to come here. Puma, of course, being Conan's ward. Mm-hmm. Puma the Robin to Conan's Batman. But like Bat or Co- Puma is the because Conan's no longer wrestling. So the Batman beyond. Yeah. Oh, Puma yeah. Puma yeah. is the Batman Beyond to Conan's old Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I was going to say the memory yeah. of his dead parents is Conan because that's what's keeping Puma fighting. Yeah, but, but he, your thing makes a lot more sense because of the whole Conan not being dead. Okay. Yeah. But like, I get where you're going. I appreciate that. The whole thing is, yeah, Puma wanted to come here, uh, but if. If I, Conan, let Puma into your office, he would destroy the whole place. He's a big old jungle cat. He's going to piss all over it because you didn't de- you didn't lay down a single piece of uh, kitty litter. He says, meow, meow, pss, meow. They're going real hard into Puma is a cat. And Cueto immediately, I love, I, I do love how clear Cueto's character is. Uh, where he's he acts very cool and very empower and very powerful, but he's kind of just a coked out coward. Mm-hmm. He immediately immediately passes the buck off to Big Rick and his crew. Yeah, like Quaido Miller. I have no problem with Puma. I don't know why Big Rick did that. That's crazy. So K Dog sets up the fight for Puma's revenge, a Boyle Heights style match. It's not a wrestling match. It's a street fight. Yeah. Anything goes. And then what's his face poured a drink and asked Conan if he wanted one, and then. The what's the guy's name? Cueto. Cueto. C U E T O. Dario Cueto. So Dario stands up and is about to drink it. Then Conan says, You want to know what? On second thought, I will take a drink. And then just shoots it down. And I said, Conan likes his drinks like I like my women, heavily breathed on, welched <laughs> on the rocks. I thought you were going to say, he likes his drinks like his like like he likes his women taken from another man. Ooh, that's also Ooh. good. Cause I do love it's and it's such like a small like film trope type of deal of like these are two dudes you A don't want to mess with and B can't trust. Right? Cause Conan like it's it's pretty early in the segment that uh Dario offers the drink, Conan says, No, I'm good. And then by the end, he's like, I will take that drink and straight snatches it mm-hmm. from Dario's hands, slurps it into his face. Where it's like, 
in a way that you you're kind of sitting there going like you meant to do that the entire time yeah like the only you turned down that drink so you could steal it from his hands later to make him feel like a little boy in front of you and it's it's erotic i'm turned on i'm about it I like my women breathe down because Nicole's so pale, her skin's almost translucent like a window. Mm -hmm. So I go, ah, I fog it up and then write something on it before she leaves to work. So she'll walk down and good thing. Like it's it's that time when she's she's not sweaty from the sun and she's not going to be wearing a hoodie or something. I breathe on the back of her head without her knowing and I write wash me. Oh, that's cute. Cause, 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 cause she's dirty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't need. To, I, I contributed to an area that did not need contribution. Welcome to the podcast. I would have <laughs> loved to see Puma get in the goddamn ring with a human dog. He loved to say he was a dog so much so I think he was. Got that dog in him. DMX. I would have loved to see Puma just break his neck. Oh wait, no. I like. Okay, so he he's deeply a flawed person, and I disagree with mo a lot of his things he's said. DM we've talked about this before. I've got yeah. a complicated relationship with DMX. We could just leave it at that. I just say, hey, man, really wish I could go. I guess I could go back and let He's not getting money for flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood anymore. He is not, and that album is still dope. And uh, uh, it's cold and hell is hot. See, I never, I could only fully get into... Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood. I think it is front to back a fantastic album. Yeah. I I, I feel I honestly feel that way about uh, Hell is Hot, too. It's cold and hell is hot. Or no, it's dark and hell is hot. Excuse me. It's cold and hot. That would be so confusing. Mm -hmm. the, the, A &R, the A R is playing their electric guitars. would be like, is it cold or is it hot? D, what are we doing here? And he goes, I don't know. But whatever you do, don't call me D, please. Did they have COVID? Because it's cold oh and hot. Oh, my God. The electric... Oh, my gosh. We're blowing this whole thing up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but back at the desk, we got a horn section. Vampiro loves his juggalos. Matt Stryker has a cold. You can hear, like, in his voice immediately. But he still sucks, and we'll get to it later. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for our first match? Yes. Mil Huertes with Katrina versus Drago with Slithering Tongue. Yeah, and uh, Mil Mortek is the first one in the ring, and it, what's her name? Uh, Katrina. Katrina, like, hands hands the little handkerchief, and I wrote down, dude kissed a stupid little rock. It just gave a little kiss to it. Call that rock John Roxley, because every match <laughs> is a kiss John Roxley match. Shouts out to Effie. Hell uh -huh. yeah. Well, uh, man, I truly, <laughs> when I, I was like, James, this is fucking perfect. John Roxley. John Rox, 10 out of 10. I, I, and I like that you could have gone the Dwayne route and you're like, no, you know what? Because John we established Roxley. the kiss John Moxley matches. Shouts out to Effie. Everybody wants to kiss John Roxley and mm -hmm. I don't blame him. Uh, yeah, the, they still haven't explained. Uh, actually, I do like where this goes later. I think it's this episode, uh, but we still don't know why he has a hanky chief. Uh, we don't know a lot, like, how he survived that wild uh, earthquake that killed everyone in his family. Uh, we just know, but we know he's getting, uh, I think, a little smoother in the ring. Uh, I know you're a Mil Muertes fan. Oh, yeah. And it's weird. And again, my whole thing with Mil Muertes, body guys just aren't my fa favorite genre of professional wrestler. I enjoy it. I respect it. It's just not my, like... You know, it's like, uh, like I maybe I don't love country music. Did I have to say if a country artist comes along that's very good, I'm gonna turn that tune that out? No, it's just not my go-to. I think of it like this: I don't like body guy versus body guy. But when a body guy can go up and work well with a high flyer, I think that's what Mil Morte does. It, and, it, yes, so much so that he just El Cabongs. This man, so like he 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 gives him a good El Cabong. Uh, like he power slams him like he's a guitar. And while I was quarantined in Florida, I was rewatching Duncanville. If you haven't seen Duncanville, I highly suggest it. It's on Fox. Betsy Sadaro is a starring cast member of it. It's a cartoon, yeah. and there's an episode where Duncan says "fuck you" to his dad. 
and he feels bad about it. And he's like, just punish me. Just like do anything. Ground me. And uh, the dad is played by um, Phil Dumphy from Modern Family. Don't know yeah. his name right now. I did at one point in my life, but true. Please continue. He says, just bash me over the head with one of your guitars like they do in the cartoons. And I was like, yeah. El Cabog, El Cabog. Quick draw McGraw is El Cabog. Oh, no. Cut that out. James, I just revealed the secret identity of El Cabong. Oh, no. I fucked up. Oh, no. That joke is for, like, the two people who are deeply aware of <laughs> Hanna-Barbera lore. <laughs> and they might be us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a fun, it is a fun match, though. Um, like, he's as a, as a base, as a big guy to a high flyer, Mil Moritz is definitely getting there. Yeah, he, he does a spear, like, a mid-air dra- and Draco. And a good-looking one. Jumps from the top rope, and then Mil Mortes just spears him midair. It was great. There, I wrote down DDT, and I don't remember why, but I know it was like a fucking good spot. Uh, uh, let me see. Oh my gosh, did I not have the? Oh, uh, Drago gets back on the top with a super. Oh yeah, super kick in the corner. So yeah, Drago's on the corner. Mil Mortes charges, runs into the foot of one Drago, sweeps the leg. And then springboard DDT. Yeah, he jumps off. Uh, Drago jumps from the second rope, lands like in a DDT position. I think hits a tornado on Mil Muertes for the two. And it looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Like Drago great. looks great. And the story of this was to just show that Mil Muertes is not invincible like he can get hurt there is a way to power through him but right now no one has done it it's like speed running you're like i know i can do a no hit run of dark souls but for the longest time no one could do it and then once someone does it it's gonna keep snowballing or i could have said like in battle bots taking down tombstone once (laughs) one person does it everyone's like oh tombstone's done yeah, you could have you could have made that comparison to Tombstone from BattleBots. I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple story. There's a couple stories though happening here. Uh, I think there's another story with Drago being the third member of that trifecta, and I do mean kind of in order, right? Phoenix won the match, but Pentagon is still fighting him. Pen- like they were clearly kind of setting up Phoenix versus Penta for the one mm-hmm. and two spot, and then here's Drago. Right, who lo- who kind of keeps losing, who like beat Cuerno, which we're gonna get to in his debut, but really had to fight for it. So it's this sort of like there's this there's a the little bit of red haired stepchild to Drago, which is very like to me very exciting to see this luchador who's not presented as the best, who does have to like claw and scratch every time. Mm-hmm. You know, like even like P- like Puma and Phoenix. They're clawing, they're, like, they're, they're, they're fighting to get back up because they're fighting against their size, but not the way Drago is. Not the way Drago just isn't as clean and isn't as, yeah, isn't as much of a golden child. Yeah. Uh, real quick about, you said redheaded stepchild. I've been playing a lot of Wheel of Fortune for the Switch. Okay. And I've unlocked all of the customizable things that you can unlock. Like, I'm level 40. I'm as high as you can go. And there's no, like, I was like, oh, here's all the hair for women, all the color of hair. Zero red hair. It is. It's very blonde, brunette, a mix of both, and then black hair. There's no red hair. Because I was trying to make Nicole, and Nicole's like, well, you got to do pink. I was like, there's no pink. It's just these four colors. There's not even redheads, which is insane. I cannot believe they would do this. I hate that the first place I went to when I was going to name a famous redhead was a porn star. So I'm just going to say it was going to be Lauren Phillips, actually. Okay. But shouts out to Lauren Phillips. Shouts out to Dolly Little. Mm-hmm. Wheel of Fortune. Get your ass on track. If I can't make a redheaded stepchild, how am I going to make the underachieving but with the grit and determination of a guy like Drago? Uh-huh, There's a third uh-huh. story also happening. What's up? If you remember one King Cuerno from two weeks ago now, the uh, hunter, the mm-hmm. man with the really dope uh, deer headpiece, shows up in the middle of this match to just real creepy watch from the rafters. I liked it. Loved it. Thought it was cool as hell. Loved, loved the way he's like, he's paying attention. He's noting. And I like this. I like this idea that he is this sort of, he's, he's this men, he's this 
mental fighter as well. Like he's like when he hunts his prey, he takes his time to learn about it. It's yeah. not. Yeah, it's not just going in to fight. It's going in with a battle plan, a very evil battle plan, because after the match, Cuerno does make his way to the ring. Mil Muertes uh, does one with a flatliner in three minutes, 58 seconds. We spent more time talking about the match than we did. About- <laughs> like we usually do. But there are, yeah, there are three stories kind of going on. Queen There's actually Cuerno- four. F- what's the fourth? Oh, we'll get to it. Uh, no, well, I the think. fourth is, I I believe Katrina is snowballing souls to Mil Muerte. Ooh, okay, let's get over, let's get this Cuerto thing, and then we'll talk. Let's talk about okay. that. Okay, um, because yeah, because because we don't get a whole lot. Uh, Cuerto sl- uh, slips into the ring, hits Drago with Thrill of the Hunt, with his, which is a Samoan driver, his finisher move, before almost ca- almost caressing the cheek of Drago and then slithering away. Mm-hmm. He doesn't quite touch it. He just does the motion of this is what it would look like should I caress your cheek. Now, will I caress your cheek? I don't know. Tune in next week. But this is what it would look like. Maybe he's being respectful and hover handing. Maybe. I mean, this is 2014. So it's the year it's it's a year before uh, we understand in this country what uh, social distancing means. But maybe he's just hover handing. Yeah. I've always wanted to, just as a joke, to take pictures hover-handing Nicole. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe y'all are snogging now. That's so uh-huh, exciting. Uh-huh. Speaking of snogging. Can we talk about this fan theory? This, uh, this, this breakdown, this conspiracy theory that could blow up the whole Lucha Underground story wide open. What the fuck is this? snowballing souls james uh, so when you snowball it means like okay, you okay hold on no 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 what? no no don't we this is not that type of podcast oh you, okay i thought you didn't know what snowballing meant no i do know what snowballing means swishing yep yeah, swishing cum around into your mouth and then kissing your partner and put, inserting the cum into their mouth it's beautiful uh, or if you're in a threesome or a foursome it's just going into someone else's mouth Yep. We we can't talk about that on this show. That's what I th- that like she licked the soul and then kissed oh. Mil Morte. Maybe that's it. Yeah, cuz that's one of the things that I've 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 had I didn't really think about too hard because wrestling's a filthy place. After every match, uh Katrina licks the victim on the side of the face and then will go kiss Mil Muertes. Mm-hmm. I love that. Cuz then then it's like, hey, no homo, no homo. It's it's being made its way to me by a woman. Sure, of course. <laughs> I and like and that might even explain the rock. Maybe the rock is like a soul bank for all the souls that Bill Mortez can't carry around in the moment. Mm-hmm. He has like this little rock full of souls. And that's why he kisses it every match, because he gets a little bit of soul juice from it. I don't know why I wrote this. It must, I think it's from something in this match or maybe the next one. Is this becoming Tekken? Because I think they start giving backstory of someone and it is starting to feel very Tekken-esque. I think it's always been Tekken. All right, I think it's okay. The, I think, yeah, sort of that <laughs> astronaut meme. It's always it's been always Tekken, been Tekken. James. I, but like, but no, that's, it's, yeah, because it's not, it is, it's hard to say because it's week five, you know, it's the fifth episode, uh, nothing is paid off yet and it will be too soon to pay anything off. Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of like wild ideas and wild things going. I mean, that's just wild. It's just wild and crazy stuff. There's a backstage segment where we learn nothing, but that there is a secret. Cueto walks past uh, Katrina. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He walks into her room and is surprised to see Mil Muertes and Katrina there because they're they're magic. Uh, They can be anywhere. And we don't. And all that we know is that Katrina is aware. Mil and Katrina are aware that Dario Cueto has a secret. That's this was the is this becoming Tekken? Very Tekken. But I think but they kind of like I think from from the get go, we were all like, I don't trust this dude. I think like he's they, trying to, like, bring about a god. I think so as well. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of, maybe Fingers it's because Tekken, Tekken 3 is a goddamn saint and savior. And that game is all about bringing back a god, mm-hmm. a god of fights. But, like, yeah, it kind of feels like, I assume that's where it goes. When you break that down, it's so stupid. It's so good. But, what are you yeah, talking about? But also cool. 
He throws his son into a volcano. That's the best. And then he throws his dad into a volcano. Mm -hmm. And then everyone gets chained to a rocket. Then it's the awesome. like great grandfather comes back somehow. Yeah. And he's got a face in his belly and it shoots out fireballs. It's great. Also robots and ninjas. And uh. tiny little manga dinosaurs. God, is, it is canon. It's great. Also, Johnny Mundo is not in Tekken, but he's pretty uh. cool. And he's working out backstage giving a sit-down interview at the Temple Warehouse. The international superstar has gone by many names, but here in Lucha Underground, you can call him Mundo. Oh, he's very... Johnny Mundo is kind of a sex god throughout this entire little promo package. Mm -hmm. And of course he is. He's look, the guy's gorgeous. John Morrison still got it. Is it him who is billed from the open road? No, that is Son of Havoc. Okay. Which is also very, that's some great billing. M-Dog M -Dog 20 from the open road. Fucking let's go. If we ever do a wrestling event, I would like to be billed from the single holy church of cloacanism. <laughs> As you should be, as I as I will as well. And also, single holy is because there's only one hole. Yep. <laughs> Johnny Mundo uh, goes on to talk about how he does, how he did what he wanted, how he did what he wanted, how he wanted, wherever he wanted, and because he was so gifted, nobody could tell him no, until they started telling him no. Uh huh. <laughs> which is, uh, because of the because of damn backstage politics which is true in the wwe he did kind of he, he didn't make a lot of friends in his uh first run because he was too hot he was just too hot uh they didn't know what to do with him so he and I, damn i forgot to check whether he left or he was released i don't remember but it's what for whatever reason they part ways and johnny mundo pursues his other passions including sweet parkour and appearing in the film 20 Feet Below, 20 Feet Below, The Darkness Descending, starring Danny Trejo leading a subway cult. We might have to watch that for uh, this existed. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Is it a subway cult, meaning like the transportation or the sandwich company? Unfortunately, yes. They, they, they exist secretly underground in the Damn subway it. trains. Now, does that mean they, have, they don't have a subway sandwich deal? I don't know. We'll have to watch the film to find out. Because that would be very community-esque of a subway cult. It would be, a, it would be very community-esque. Dude, did you see? And a movie has been announced. No. Yes. Uh, no, I said no, I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, on my birthday, I yeah, woke yeah. up, I went on Facebook, and then Peacock just, it was like a community-looking background, oh. and it said hashtag and a movie, and I was like, yeah! Yeah, and I heard that show was good. So Dude. Congratulations, all you virgins. You, you did it. Proud of you. I'm not a virgin. I respectfully nod in agreement, but I'm doing shifty eyes, folks. I'm pinning every single fucking night, <laughs> dude. <laughs> give me that one, give me that two, give me that three, baby. No, that sounds cool. I also, I need to write pinning down. Uh, so like... <laughs> As uh, so our like recurring jokes... After, after all those sweet parkours and 20 feet belows, the darkness descendings, like Johnny Cage, but less douchey, he comes to Lucha Underground, not for glitz, not for glamour, but to fight for pride and for honor. It's when Moon... <laughs> And I do want to shout out again when Mundo says his own name, which he does again at the end. I think I lost my virginity. John, Johnny Mundo saying his own name is fucking hot. Hell yeah. What, are you the virgin here? Uh, I've been the, all along. I've always been the virgin, baby. Damn. You're the virgin Mary. I'm the, I'm the virgin Harry. Harry okay. Styles. Man, Harry Styles uh, seems inauthentic to me sometimes. I have no opinion. I have not, I have, I have not consumed any of his media. I hope you people enjoy it. I think he's secretly a fuckboy. That's what I'm saying. I secretly think that all community fans, while they are not all Harry Styles fans, they all behave the same way regarding their favorite piece of media, whether it be Harry Styles 
or the off lauded sitcom community? Man, community, come over and watch it with Nicole and I. Okay. Uh, but first, we got to talk about this Son of Havoc with Ivalice versus mm-hmm. Masquer- Masquerita Sangrada match, which is really kind of when I start. Striker is fine in that first match. This match is what I'm picking up. I don't think Striker understands what he's doing. Uh, okay. I think yeah. I know why. I was listening to this in headphones. I don't know. How do you do you listen in headphones? I do. Okay. During this match and the matches going on, there is a child screaming random like rabid wrestling fan shit in yeah. what like in like the right headphone and I'm like, "Holy shit." That's all I can focus on. I don't give a, I do not care about commentary. I want to hear this yeah. child scream. I mm, clip that out of context. Okay. <laughs> Ironically, I was the same way, but to me, that random child screaming was Matt Stryker. Um, so let's talk about, when we talked about uh, Mascarita Sangrada before, the, he is not the original Mascarita Sangrada, but this is the Mascarita mask of the legendary uh, Mini Astraya which was a a major division that focused on both little people and shorter wrestlers. To be Mm -hmm. a mini Australia, and I I don't think I clarified this when we first talked about it, you didn't didn't have to be a a, a little person. You, uh, You could just be a shorter wrestler. And again legendary like like this is a very important mask and kind of a big deal to be wrestling on American soil. Like Stryker is literally giggling at Masquerita's offense. Mm, okay, yeah, I'm remembering this now. Yeah, like a lot of it is just, well, it, we'll, we'll go through it. Like that striker imagines he picked Ivelisse up from his, uh, from Son of Havoc's hometown, side of the road. Ah, she's on, she, she was found on the side of the road. Sluts. Thanks, Matt Striker. We appreciate that. Also, Ivelisse pulling Son of Havoc's beard at the beginning of the match is also very sexy. I was turned on a lot during this episode. Mm-hmm. That's why Matt Striker pissed me off. It made everything worse. But, dude, just evil he's pulling this M-Dog 20's fucking beard around. I'm like, oh, hell yes. Absolutely. Uh, this is an evil East support channel. But, yeah, the, the, first, the first part I know is uh, Striker incidentally. Like, it's not even, like, purposefully. Because, again, Son of Havoc at this point is a bad guy. We do not like mm-hmm. Son of Havoc. He's arrogant. He's kind of full of shit. And something uh, Vampiro mentions up top. He mentions during the Mil Muertes match, I believe. Vampiro, and throughout the episode, stressing that it does not matter where you came from, what walk of life, the doors of the temple are open to you. Much like the gathering. The temple has the same rules as the gathering of Juggalos. It's open to everyone if you're down to clown. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Matt Stryker gets that. The way he buries Masquerita and Sexy Star, suggesting uh, Quato's booking Son of Havoc against these two to laugh at Son of Havoc. Like, Stryker kind of puts it out there like, oh, I think Dario Quato is kind of having a joke at the expense of Son of Havoc, making him compete against Sexy Star and Masquerita Sangrada. And no, these are competitors. These, these are people who signed up to compete and are being presented, especially in Sexy Star's case, are being presented as major players. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, why would you... It's confusing because that's what Son of Havoc, the character, thinks. Like, every time he's in a match with Masquerita or a Sexy Star, part of his heel shtick is that he underestimates them. Yeah. And then he fails. Why is Matt Stryker doing the same thing? Yeah, this should be leading up to, because I've said it before, when you disrespect Lucha you are going to get your comeuppance. And I think unless, like, like if he doesn't get his comeuppance within the next, like, five episodes, it's just him being a shit heel. Who, Stryker? Yes. And, well, and the worst part is, I, maybe, but up until now, part of it is we'll see how it plays out because it already has played out, so I'm not worried about giving the money now. But Mad Stryker is the good guy. Famously in wrestling, you look at like Jerry Lawler and JR, mm-hmm. right? Where the, usually the play-by-play, the person calling the moves out, weren't a wrestler. They're, they're, they're more uh, news like official, right? Yeah. And they're usually pulling for the good guys because they're calling it down the middle 
and the good guys are the ones not cheating. So the play by that's supposed that's Matt Stryker who's doing play by play. The color commentary color commentator, the guy who's like more like, here's what it feels like and here's the context of these moves, usually is a former wrestler, usually is siding with the bad guys because they have experience of being in the ring. Jerry Lawler. Vampiro is at least in the first four episodes was the Jerry Lawler. Vampiro is the one like, I don't like this Chavo. Oh, he's cheating? Okay, I kind of like Chavo mm-hmm. now. And then my instructor is like, no, you can't do this. And al- unless they're switching it, which, okay, it's very early to do that, but it does. It didn't feel that way. It felt like, it felt like it was presented in a way <laughs> that Mad Striker, I think, honestly, kind of like was behaving in this mindset, this older yeah. mindset of like, oh, like he's literally giggling at impressive moves that Masquerade is doing. Mm-hmm. He's hitting springboard arm drags and he's flying around the ring and he's doing some fucking great offense. And he literally giggles, not in a way to like, I don't think in a way to get heat. I think he actually thought, oh, look at the little person wrestle. Isn't this funny? And like, fuck off that striker. Yeah. This is Masquerita Sangrata, god damn it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's, uh, oh. I don't remember how he reacted to this, but how I reacted to uh, Son of Havoc, I said, sir, this is not a kiss sexy star match that is reserved to John Moxley. That part was, <laughs> oh, just cringy and uh, I did not like it. That's the next match. Sexy Star is not involved in this match. Wait, I thought Sexy Star was in this match. No. Okay, r- remember, I watched uh, you. We were talking about Sexy Star, right? Yes, because Son of Havoc has been wrestling Sexy Star the oh, last four okay. weeks. Yeah. And that, and that, but that's also part of it. He's like with that one comment of Dario Cueto is having a laugh at Son of Havoc by making him, he buries Sexy Star and Mascarita Sangrada, mm-hmm. calling them like, and all credit. And, and I will say this all credit to Vampiro throughout this episode, who was, again, I, was I thought was the bad guy, but is the only person who's like who's bringing it back down. Like, hey, Masquerita is a legend. Like, it's not like it's actually when he he corrects uh, Matt Stryker on that comment. Like, oh, he's have uh, Dario Cueto's having a joke at Son of Havoc. No, these are and Vampiro comes right in. No, the te- the temple doors are open for everyone, and that's what makes this company so great. Mm-hmm. Is that we is that everyone as long as they have the the heart of a warrior is encouraged to compete and we give them the opportunity to do so yeah it's just some of it's very western uh matt striker coming came from wwe where like or not western because obviously uh mexico is in the west but north american it's very america it's very and specifically wwe in the pg era where like i remember they brought famously they they tried to bring in a mini australia division and i think the late 2000s uh they called it the juniors division Okay, that's that's what New Japan calls their uh, uh, lower weight class. They call it juniors. That's fine. Oh, why are you using a graphic with a bouncing ball and balloon lettering? Oh, God, you think they are clowns. And, like, a, no. No, they're not. This shit's, like, they're wrestlers. They're fighters. They're warriors. Yeah. And, yeah, like, mm, it's a very, it, it was very hard to watch Striker. To listen to Striker throughout this entire match. I think most of my notes are like, yo, fuck Max Striker. And then, so, it's Ch- Chavo's not. I guess I don't have a single note from this match besides from the open road. Uh, it's a pretty, it's, it's honestly, I had a lot of, I had fun watching this match. Masquerita is the hero. Is, is Son of Havoc larger than him? Yes. Does that mean Masquerita's fighting uphill? Yes, but he's been fighting uphill his whole life. And he's also fighting with Ivelisse on the outside, cheating. Mm-hmm. Like, Son of Havoc will grab that for his attention, she'll choke him on the ropes, which again is kind of hot, but I'm not here for that. Eventually, like, eventually he kind of like, he outsmarts Son of Havoc to chase him around the ring and then run into Ivelisse. They're holding each other. And by the time they both look up, Masquerita is flying off the top rope to the outside. It's beautiful. Eventually, the, the finish, Masquerita tilt a whirl head scissors twice. So he goes around his body twice and then hits the head scissors, rolls him up for the one, two, three, four minutes and 53 seconds. Hell yeah. Dude, it's dope. And then we have Sexy Star versus Ooh Chavo. Okay, this is, and uh, so I was watching 
WWE 2009, 2011, that era. And Chavo. Cult of personality. When he was in WWE, he never looked this menacing and dominant. Like here, he is a fucking scary individual in the ring. He literally just went to war with whatever the Mexican underground is. Like, like he's like he's gone out of his way. Whatever that was from the uh, who was it that called him out? Oh, I forgot who called. Was it Vampiro who called him out? Who's like, hey, you kind of just made enemies with everyone by attacking Blue Damon Jr. by attacking Mascarita Sangrada. I thought it was Conan. It was Conan. Thank you. That's ballsy. Mm-hmm. That is like true. Like I don't. Yes, I am the villain of the story, and y'all can fucking get used to it. Chavo's. To such a piece of shit. He looks like, speaking of, he looks like he has one ready in the chamber to dump out into someone's duffel bag. Yes. Chavo has become the bag shitter. Mm-hmm. The greatest twist of all. Oh, my gosh. And he's and he's absolutely a menace to Sexy Star. This is where that weird kiss uh, you, you mentioned earlier. Yes. Yeah, there's a weird... Uh, Chavo quarters sexy star, then kisses her. Yeah. That leads into a slap. This is this is this is where sexy star comes back, where she slaps him off of his feet. Like, and he sells it. He goes to the ground. Uh he gets back up and just fucking like I think it's a I forget I think it's a dropkick. Or no, it's a head scissors. She t- 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 uh she pulls it to Harris from the corner and throws him out of the ring. I think I know what Will Smith was watching in 2014. Oh, you, I, mm, that's a good, good referential humor, James. Uh, <laughs> I think I know what Sexy Star was watching in 2011 on possibly ABC. The slap. The slap? Yeah, yeah. okay. I'm glad that somebody <laughs> remembers that show. Uh, but it's a talk about, and it's, it's this, is this a conversation that's happening now in wrestling? And even and comic book movies, for that matter, uh, I don't like seeing I don't like seeing men attack women. It, it feels weird, and yeah, that's a bad thing, but it can be used to tell a story very well. Like for instance, here, Chavo. Nobody likes the nobody likes that Chavo corner corners sexy star and kisses her. We all like the fact that afterwards she kicks his ass and like sets that up. Which it, it's yeah, it's a, it's a weird question of equality. I don't know. If we're qualified to get into, but that like I I don't know I love seeing Miss Marvel kick the shit out of like Ronan or some other Marvel villain. That being said, there's probably gonna be a part in the fight where Ronan or Thanos or whoever gets a punch in on Miss Marvel because they're fighting. Yeah, you know I it's I, yeah I don't want to. There's a couple of like weird comic fans and wrestling fans like all over fans. It's just like oh no no I don't I don't know how I feel about that. I'm like no it's a, it's a woman kicking ass. Let's. Let's let's celebrate that. Let's mm-hmm. let's tell that story. What, one of the best moments in Endgame, spoilers for Endgame, is when mm-hmm. all the women converge and like start beating the shit out of people, and then yeah. oh man, when when Captain Marvel comes the fuck down and just like tears through that ship, like I st- I that looks great. I did not know any. I watched Endgame. That was the yeah. only Marvel like MCU <laughs> movie besides you. You didn't watch the. You didn't see Infinity Wars? No, I the watched first part? Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and then, what was it called? Uh, the first Iron Man. I think those were the only MCU movies, but as a comic book fan and being in a comic book store for like four years every every week, maybe three times a week to pick up Nicole, I'm a familiar with the storylines, but man, did that, that moment made me start tearing up. I was like, yeah. It was super cool. But like how much less cool are those moments if they're not, again, and maybe not in the case of Miss Marvel because she is invulnerable. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think there's anyone, but in the case of, I mean, she's not in there, but Black Widow, or you know, so, so some of the some of the not Miss Marvel superheroines, yeah, they might get they're gonna get punched once or twice in the fight because it's the fight, and that's the like that that's the sort of up and down storytelling we want to see. We like that's dramatic is to see like oh my gosh they might lose, mm-hmm. oh my god like yeah they they're they're not perfect they could lose and then we come up from behind them and we root for them. My first favorite, Shawn Michaels. It took me a long time to realize why I liked him so much. 
dude's really good at getting the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. Not many people look, look as good at getting the shit kicked out of him. And that's the part where we rally behind our heroes mm-hmm. in whatever medium that is. It's all, to, it's, I guess I'm justifying the weird corner kiss where like, yes, this is very bad. In the context of the match, though, it is presented as something very bad that then he gets his comeuppance for. Yeah. And goes to make Chavo. Chavo looks terrifying in that moment. Mm-hmm. Like you're talking about the men, the, like the at, the day and night shift of Chavo Guerrero from the WWE, from the Kerber and White gimmick, which I don't know if you ever seen that. No. Uh, when Chavo pretended he was a Caucasian person from the suburbs. Wowzers. They put that on TV. Yeah, I was going to mention mm-hmm. in uh, WWE, like when they went PG, they're like, hey, we're not going to swear. We're not going to show drinking. But like prejudice, that's still on the table. Oh, absolutely. Let me show you a little something called Kerwin White. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chavo, yeah, Chavo's an absolute piece of shit here. And, and actually, yeah, because the first act of the match is Chavo in control. When the bell rings and the match starts, Chavo's an overpowering sexy star. Sexy star, I think one of, her, like one of her strengths is her grit and determination. But the flaw in that is that she goes into battle head first and kind of runs into Chavo overpowering her, who, has the te- who also has the technique to like understand a running opponent. I know how to use their momentum against him because like, he's a veteran. I think what does I forget? Does he lose or win? So let's get to the end of the match because it's very cool. okay. Chavo controls the first act of the match. The forest kiss in the corner. Um, I'm just catching up with my notes. Tears him out of the ring. Oh yeah. After the corner kiss, uh, he rolls out of the ring. Sexy grabs a chair and preps the chair shot. Like she's holding. She's like get, she's like get in the air. She's lining it up. Mm-hmm. And the referee's a fucking dork who's like, hey, you can't do that. Shut the fuck up, referee. We all want to see it. Uh, the referee's like, no, don't do it. And I love that the good guy here, sexy star, fucking takes the ref to dick kick city. Mm-hmm. Punts this man, punts this referee in the groin. Disqualification, two minutes and 12 seconds. So technically Chavo wins. Yeah. But but he's like groggy. He's about to get smashed in the face with a chair. Referee's down and holding his penis because it hurts after getting kicked there. And Pentagon Jr., a man with something to prove. As much as he's like not, he's the, he's the dark side to Drago and the redheaded stepchild situation. Mm-hmm. Like, Dar- like Dario always kind of made it clear, like only one of you three, you all three are the best luchadores in Mexico. I really only need one of you. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it's going to be Phoenix. And every week Pentagon's coming out with he's doing evil things because he needs to be seen because he's he's afraid of being overshadowed Mm -hmm. is my interpretation. There's a lot of ways to interpret uh, these motives, but that's what I'm taking away from it. So he's coming out here. He sees what Chavo's doing. He's seeing Chavo make waves. He's Chavo is taking out the tradition. He's taking out the old school uh, and making a, a name for himself. And I think Pentagon sees that he's questioning it the whole time. He's, he's looking back and forth and back and forth, but he's leaning towards like, yes, this is how we, this is how we make waves. I, he grabs the chair from Sexy Star's hands, and he's gonna. And Chavo grabs Sexy Star, and Pentagon Junior is gonna belt her in the face with the chair until Phoenix, baby. It's always been Phoenix. It's always been Phoenix. Ju- comes out of nowhere, jumps off the top rope, kicks the chair in Pentagon's face. Then him and uh, Sexy Star kind of set up this terrace. He like launches Sexy Phoenix, launches Sexy in the air so she can head scissor Chavo, dump him away. He runs away with his tail between his legs. And Pentagon Jr. looks very confused, which is fair because he just got kicked in the head with a chair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I screamed, team up. Uh, and I, this is what I'm, I'm thinking. I think Chavo is going to... Make a pact with some because I'm saying this because it's it's within lore of this show. He's going mm-hmm. to make a pact with some Aztec demon of some mm-hmm. sort. And I think he's going to don a mask. And that's when he's going to start taking yeah. people down. It will be interesting if he dons a mask because masks have such a specific cultural identity to them in, in Luta Libre. Like you I mean, you look at El Santo, right, who famously was buried in his mask, was very rarely seen without it. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows who Chavo is already. 
So like, like, like that's like, like that is part of it is that your identity as a wrestler is the mask more than it is you. Or maybe paint. He might start doing. It might paint. be paint. I could see it. It'd be interesting because we haven't. Also, we know it because we get all these vibes. Nothing has been explicitly stated as supernatural yet, right? Mil Moritz is just a child who survived an earthquake. I'm taking him very supernatural. He is, but we haven't been presented with any like factual. Like we get the vibes of supernatural. But we haven't been presented any supernatural things yet, which is just interesting. The kissing the rock, man, that's pretty supernatural. You don't have to be supernatural. Yeah, I can kiss a rock today. Okay, get Dwayne out here and kiss him. I'm going to call Dwayne on the podcast next week and kiss that man on the tits like that woman who bought, who bit that man's titty because she thought he was the rock. It was on Instagram. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But no, but like, I, I, that'll be interesting. And, I want, and if Shava was the first person to explicitly go supernatural, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, but whatever he's doing, he is making moves and he's getting some, he's getting some uh, unforeseen allies in the, in the likes of Pentagon Jr. Uh, but we do have a main event mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it is a Boyle Heights street fight with a big Rick. With Mr. Cisco and Cortez Castro versus Prince Boom. And it is in everything legal match, which I don't understand. I would love to see someone just bring a chainsaw to the match with extra gas and maybe remind, a lighter. Remind me to show you this clip of the best friends and Orange Cassidy featuring a chainsaw. Okay, yeah. Yes. Or just bring yeah, it. I, Agreed. I'm, as a big old Chuck Taylor fan, ag- we need more chainsaws in wrestling, you cowards. Because, uh, like, the, the mm. joke would be, like, I think I even have a crumbums written like this where Frank goes to a wrestling match and it's in everything legal. And he just pulls out, like, he has a little gun. And they're like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, no. But, like, then, it you know, yeah. you're in a venue now. You can't, like, make, like... Those, those you can't do. So a chainsaw is like, holy shit, no. Actually, little Franklin dragging a chainsaw to, the, to the ring and having to, like with his crinkly little bones, having to bring that up those metal stairs. I guess he would, yes. he would probably like have a rope tied to it so he can just like, like rope and pulley it up. That would be very funny. Nicole, if you're listening, I know you're not. Draw that up. <laughs> I would love to see that real quick on the last match. But I forgot to shit on Matt Stryker more. Matt, as, as Sexy Star is making her a ring, Vampiro puts over how Sexy Star is a warrior. Vampiro says Sexy Star is a warrior. Matt Stryker is horny. And Vampiro has a great response. Matt, I'm glad she provokes your fetishes. <laughs> Just, and then Matt, my favorite part, Matt Stryker from Queens, New York, claims the locker room doesn't accept Chavo as a luchador, because he's from El Paso, Texas. Matt Stryker from Queens, New York, accuses Chavo of not being a luchador enough. Fucking Prince Puma's from Illinois. Uh-huh, Whatever. Uh-huh. We're talking about the Prince Puma match now. I just had to get that out. I had, I had to say that. Yeah. Uh, so we could talk about this beautiful Prince Puma match. Vampire reminds us of the no count out, no rules. Hopes to see an overdose of violence. Vampiro with like the sound bites all over this episode. I love like again as much as I dis as much as I dislike Striker. So maybe they are setting up a sort of like face heel switch between the two of them because Vampiro is great throughout the entire episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, there there was a I believe Matt Striker says this. I see this was things oh, Matt I Striker clocked. from Queens, New York. Uh-huh. That Matt Striker, great. So. Fucking hate there, this guy. I forget why he says this, but he he says, "Ooh, three pads on the paw of Puma," <laughs> fully establishing not only that he's a real cat, he's a real yeah. Puma, but also mm-hmm. Matt Stryker, certified cat guy. In yeah. that, like, no other non-cat person is like calling like little paw pads, but also gets very upset with a like bringing kittens to the slaughter type deal. Like he's like, whoa, no, I don't like that line at all because Matt Stryker <laughs> certified cat guy. No, for all of the misogyny, for all of the uh, a jokeification of little people wrestling, Matt Stryker is a cat guy. That's the one. That's the one group he does protect. 
Yep. With Gusto. I don't like that he's part of my group with what he's been saying in this episode, but you can't deny he's clearly a cat guy. Clearly a cat guy. Big Rick, clearly a choke Prince Puma guy. He chokes Prince Puma. That's the first move. This is actually a pretty cool street fight. I don't think we've... Is this... A, I think this is our first no DQ match. Our first, like, anything goes match. In this, yes. In this, uh, yeah. And it's fucking... It's very fun. And Big Rick... I'm, it, this match is so fun, it kind of bummed me out to see Ezekiel no longer wrestling. Because he's great here. Mm-hmm. As far as, as far as, like, big men who can athletically go, he's fun as hell to watch. Yeah. Got some great... Good fist punches. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah... Big Rick goozles him. He grabs him by the throat. Puma punches his way out, but Rick's too big. Throws Puma into the corner. Big Rick runs into a trip when Puma kicks out a knee, which is so cool to see, like, giant Ezekiel Jackson, giant Big Rick running full speed. And not just tripping him, but specifically, like, targeting his knee. And Prince Puma just, boop, kicking out his knee. So he tr- so he goes head first into the corner. I love that. Sean, can I ask you real quick? Are there children in your apartment? No, but they are outside, okay. and they are being picked up by the microphone, and right. I can I cannot do anything about about them. Unfortunately. That is fine. I just I was like, why does Sean? What is his roommate doing? That maybe roommate is an uncle or an aunt, um, mm-hmm. something of that ilk. Is Torchy Berry maybe doing voices? I am in a Full House scenario, uh, oh. the sitcom, not the card game. Yeah. So uh, I'm Uncle Jesse because I'm pretty cool and I play with the Beach Boys on weekends forever. Anyway. Hold on. Hold are you, on. Are you texting? Don't 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 text Mike Love. Please don't text Mike Love. No, if anything, I would have assumed that you're in a full house scenario. Mr. Woodchuck. You had to look up Mr. Woodchuck, the ventriloquist dummy of Joey? I just needed to make sure I got the name right. I was expecting it to have a name, not Mr. Woodchuck. Mr. Woodchuck's a great name. Yeah, it's got a catchphrase. Mm, is it made out of shifty eye, shifty eye, shifty eye? Wood. It's perfect. Perfect character. 10 out of 10. Yeah, see, that's Would you. Change a thing. I am Mr. Woodchuck. That's true. Someone shoves Uh, a fist in your ass, baby. Especially anyone but Matt Stryker. He's the only person that doesn't make me horny in this episode. Dude, they should line wrestling rings on the ground with Tempur-Pedic over Helix mattresses. Just to be as safe as you can. We don't have, we don't, we don't have, we don't have an ad spot for for Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Or a Helix. Or a Helix. Oh, oh no, I do have I do have one for Helix, but not mattresses. Okay, their couch. Uh, actually, no, it's off uh, unrelated to that company. Off brand Heelys. Okay, it's it's not yeah. um, DNA. H-E-E. No, no, it's H E E L I X. They say they're not DNA, but I've seen the vats. Anyway, there's a match happening at this right now, and it's pretty Ew. cool. Are you implying they're like cross splicing human DNA with Heelys? That's disgusting. I'm not implying it. I'm just winking a whole lot. Just think, ah, ah, ah. if you had Heelys, like biologically had Heelys, do you think the yes. wheels would be bone or like cartilage that roll? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like the I feel like the wheels are cartilage, but the axles are bone. Okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, just th- think like, oh, yeah. you broke. Just hey, how terrible breaking your arm is, breaking your axle. Oh. Oh my gosh, I think about that every day after going through several Helix experiments that have. Well, anyway, Prince Puma is now has to fight off uh, Cisco and Cortez immediately. As soon as Pu- as soon as Puma gets like his first real advantage, the two uh, Cisco and Cortez come in to just eat shit. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I was so worried. Like I, because it it wouldn't be fun to watch Puma just get beat up by three dudes. Also, and it's really cool to see Puma beat the shit out of two dudes at the same time. Yeah, but the weird thing about this is everyone in the locker room hates these three individuals. Why Whoa. wasn't everyone coming out? Who else hates these three? Ever because they're making a mockery of this and they're stealing their money. I mean, I don't think anyone because they, they haven't pissed anyone else off. Three on one is always going to be a problem, and these guys use the numbers games no one else really has a problem with these guys except for mundo and puma 
I, I think everyone should have been out there saying, fuck you. We're Hi. actual wrestlers. You're just hired hands. Get the fuck out. I don't know. I think they're, they're as much wrestlers as El Mariachi Loco. I don't, I don't want to take a, I don't want to take away and say these guys are not wrestlers. No, they just made a lot of money. I think you're jealous uh, that they made the money, uh, the briefcase full of money. And honestly, James, it's kind of embarrassing. You know what? I'm a big Rick supporter. I've come around. I'm a big Rick Cortez Cisco supporter. Uh, they made their money. They, they got the hustle. They got their grind. And Big Rick smokes big old cigars. That's cool to me. James, I think you got to stop being such a hater and start jerking off to these three men no so i already Puma's... jerked off too much today okay then let's just talk about this match i i don't know when it happens or who does it but there is an mm -hmm. over the ropes varial mctwist landed clean <laughs> there's a prince puma spot prince puma uh, it's great sasuke uh popularized it in japan this is awesome uh sort of like yeah no hands like no no hands backflip moonsault over the top rope like he does he does one handspring in the ring then jumps clears the ropes without touching them at all mm -hmm. which is super impressive and then lands on everyone and the world explodes because that move looks so fucking cool uh-huh and that's why i said hey line the rings better guys mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we need bumpers we need more bumpers but like again puma aka ricochet like they make they're just so clean it's they're so fucking cool to watch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but eventually the numbers game is, is too much even for prince puma and it's that said a lot but i think in this match it's done so well where he is fighting them he and he is beating them mm -hmm. con like consistently but there's just too many of them that's like that that's just all it comes down to on a one-on-one -on -one, or even a two-on-one -on -one, in the case of cisco and cortez going at him he has the he has them he has their number, but when it's three on one, it's too much. Uh huh. Uh, so eventually, uh, yeah, Cisco and Cortez are setting are setting up Puma. I love Big Rick's move to just grab the steel chair and sit down and be like, "Hell yeah, yeah, this shit's dope." I love it. <laughs> it looks so cool. He looks like such a fucking boss in those in those moments, but he does it too. He relies on it too long. The second time uh, Cortez and Cisco are, are double teaming him as Big Rick watches from a chair, Pumas ain't gonna fucking sit with that shit. No, he reverses them and then he kicks fucking Big Rick so hard. He falls out of the chair. I fall out of my chair. Nobody's in any chairs anymore. We're all on our feet or on our butts in awe of uh, Prince Puma still fighting back uh, three out of one. I wasn't out of my chair just yet, but we're about to be. Oh my gosh. Eventually, yeah, the, uh, Kendo Stick comes in. Puma's still fighting off. Puma gets set up in a tree of woe, which is like when you're in the corner, but you're upside down. You're mm -hmm. hanging from your feet. But in a ladder. So the ladder is set up in the corner, and then there's Prince Puma in the corner, but he's upside down. He's about to get his fucking shit thrown everywhere. Uh, rest in peace, Prince Puma, in a matter of three, two. Look up, James. Who, who, who's that in the sky? Sean... He fucking jumped Johnny Mundo from this. Uh, th so there's like a two story three. Think of an ECW that that like platform that people would jump off. And it was like insane. There is. We talked before about how Dario Cueto's office is right off the ring. Yes. And like, like there's has, there's this mm -hmm. little platform that's like two and a half stories high. That yeah, that's is the roof. That's the roof of the office. And think of. People jumping off from houses into pools, but there's no water. There's a ring. Johnny Mundo taking advantage of his stunt performing and his parkour uh, training. Dude, jumps sweet parkour. From that platform, it was probably like maybe 10 feet, like, it, like from the platform to the ring that is yeah. two stories down jumps yep. and fucking just goes to town it was insanity i loved it this is the shit that people when they were watching ecw probably were like this is the greatest but i watch it and i'm like why is it in 12 frames per second but <laughs> god, <90s. laughs> god damn it was this amazing 
Johnny Mundo comes in to make this save, and it's fucking breathtaking. He roll, he j- jumps from Cueto's office roof into the ring, rolls superhero pose, beats the shit out of everybody. Doing a real good job in this no disqualification match of turning it from three on one to two on three. Mm-hmm. And it's all going Mundo's way until Mundo has uh, a chair in hand. He's lining up the shot. Big Rick ducks at the last minute and Prince Puma is there instead. Unfortunately, not even Prince Puma can kick out out of after four on one, really, because mm-hmm. Johnny Mundo struck Prince Puma. Five on one if you count the chair. Yeah. I saw the googly eyes on that chair. Yeah, we're in Pee Wee's Playhouse now, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and when this mistaken chair hit goes, yep. put headphones on, guys, because the aforementioned child in the crowd screams, no! It's such a beautiful moment. It's why, if you're ever watching wrestling live on TV, I always kind of watch for the kids in the audience. Mm-hmm. They have the best reactions because it's magic. Butter just screamed no like I did. But no. I think she was I think she was saying, please shut the fuck up. I'm I'm hanging out, dude. I think she's just a big old Puma fan. It could be. Because the cat cats cats love cats. Mm-hmm. Uh the child screams no. Everyone's hearts break. Everyone hearts break. It's it's devastating. Mundo gets thrown out. They set up a table and Big Rick fucking just straight up Uranagis. Poor sweet Puma through that table. For the one and the two, but also the three, this match is over at 11 minutes and 19 seconds. It was great. That poor child. Yeah. Vampiro. And again, and here's the and here's the issue with Matt Stryker and Vampiro having to correct Matt Stryker in just, you know, respecting the culture of Lucha Libre. Because Matt Stryker immediately blames Johnny Mundo. Like, Johnny Mundo, you piece of shit. Why are you getting involved in this guy's business? What's wrong with you, Johnny Mundo? Oh, I hate you. Johnny Mundo's not a juggalo. Vampiro says on television, Johnny Mundo's a Jeffaho. And I couldn't believe it. It's, you have to put on the headphones. Um, but he, it's there. You have to, put, oh, you have to turn on subtitles. Uh, he I says was that, like, though. wait, I'm, I'm so confused right now. Yeah, no, Vampiro calls Johnny Mundo a Jeffaho. If you turn on subtitles and turn the headphones down really low, but then really loud at that one moment, it's tricky. It's tricky. You have to put in the Konami code. It's a lot of things, but he says it. He definitely says it. Wait, so wait, but but for real yeah. was, what did he correct Matt Stryker with? Oh, like throughout all the Masquerita moments, that sort of opening to the uh, sexy star match when he's, uh, when he kind of just, when. Wait, no, Vampiro's I mean about, about the Mundo thing. Oh, he's not correct. No, no, he's okay, not all correcting right, okay. Matt Stryker over the Mundo thing. I think my problem with it though, that is a, but that's kind of a bad guy move. That's classic Vampiro siding with the bad guys being like, Johnny Mundo, you're a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, he tried. Johnny Mundo tried. Wrestling's hard. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you hit your friend with a chair. Like that's the healthy, that's the, that's the healthy positive approach. Vampiro going the negative route with Johnny, with blaming Johnny Mundo is a bad guy move. But here's the problem. If Matt Stryker is my good guy, I don't think I want to be a good guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but that, and that's how we end the, ma- that's how we end the episode. We yeah. end the episode on this brutal, di- we end the episode on a child screaming no. <laughs> I want to hear that child scream. Okay, out of context. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is a fun interest, fun episode. Again, we're still building things. Like the big thing, the Mil Muertes, uh, Dario Cueto uh, backstage segment, where it's, it's literally just like, something's happening. But mm-hmm. we're not going to tell you what. But it's crazy. I'm loving this show, man. Dude, I'm loving seeing Chavo be a fucking menace. Love seeing Phoenix. And Phoenix being like just... Phoenix is so fucking cool, man. I'm just going to kick my brother in the head with a chair. Everyone's Puma's good. a beast. Minus Matt Stryker. Great. Matt Stryker can suck 10 eggs till the afternoon. Mm-hmm. I hope Chavo's shitting in his bag now. Me too. And Vampiro. <laughs> and apparently, no, he's not He's not in wrestling anymore. He is a major real estate mogul. He's like, yeah. He's like, I think he's part of the biggest real estate. I think he's co-owner of the biggest real estate company in Long Island. 
Way to be a stereotype, Matt Stryker. <laughs> Matt Stryker from Queens, New York, accuses Chavo of not being Mexican enough. Cool, Matt Stryker, cool. And I'm not saying there's anything bad with people who were in showbiz going into real estate. I'm just saying it is a stereotype, and that's what he did. And I'm just saying Matt Stryker from Queens, New York, Telling Chavo he's not he's not lucha enough. Excuse me, he doesn't he doesn't use the phrase Mexican enough. He says he's not lucha enough, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which still fucking sucks. Yeah, he deserves to get kabonged on the head. Matt Stryker, I'm glad she provokes your fetishes. Uh, you know what provokes my fetishes though, James? Plugs. Absa goddamn lutely, baby. You know where to find me, GooseVK, over at twitch.tv slash having a good ass time. And yeah, that's my big one. Check out uh, check out Effie again. I plugged I plugged him last time. I'll plug him again. Uh, Effie lives on twitch.tv. Great. Hey guys, check out MLMPod.com for more information on podcasts we have. And we have two new ones coming up. We have Formulaic Whoa. with R2 Shelby 2 and The Height of Horror with Presley Bracken, where we are going through years of horror. We're doing 13 movies from each year. We'll be selecting them at will, whatever we want to do. We're starting with 1998 because that is what Presley says is her favorite year in horror. So get ready for that. That's all of these are coming out within this month. So uh, be on the lookout. Follow at MSS pod on, uh oh, on Twitter. My camera fell um, <laughs> for updates on that and all of that. Then listen to my music under Marshland Monster, wherever music is found. Hey, follow me on Twitch, Mostly Speaking Sentai, where I've been playing a lot of Wheel of Fortune and trying to go through the Dot Hack series. It is a game that is really pushing me of, of like, do I actually enjoy this series or do I just <laughs> like the fact that you can level up in a game? Uh, yeah, it, it, I truly don't know. Yeah. I tried to beat all four of them within 12 hours because the speed runs of them are like two hours and there's no glitches that they're using. So I'm like, oh yeah, I should be able to, to beat each one in at least four hours. I should be able to get through one. Didn't get through a single goddamn game on that 12 hour long stream. Oh no. Yeah, it sucked. I was truly by the end of it. You can still see it on YouTube. YouTube. I was starting to go crazy at the end of it. Yeah, I I, I, I remember ra uh, setting up a stream with the express written purpose to raid you by the end of mine, because mm -hmm. I know I don't go as long as you do. Uh, and by the time I came in, I was so concerned for your mental health and as well as your physical health. Yeah, because I was also like still in the throes of COVID. So in addition to being in the throes of the dot hack universe. Yeah, it was really tough. But yeah, follow me on there or on YouTube or on Facebook. Mostly speak in Sentai on all of those. You'll be able to see our streams. And oh, my God, head over to Patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for five dollars a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday or be a ten dollar patron where you'll get exclusive content every se additional exclusive content, I should say, once a month. And then you get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those. You also get the additional content of the $5 tier. I should also say that you get everything there plus once a month stuff and shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with. All right. Just so you know, James, it's going to be a weird one for me, but follow me on this. Okay. All right. Starting with Steve F. Matt Stryker calls Chavo an evil, insecure man. Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour. Vampiro says, I don't like Chavo, so I agree with you. Alex Z, the Waz. Chavo's an evil, insecure man. Orion, he's a rapper. Defo, D hyphen, F O. I don't like Chavo, so I agree with you. Kayla, AK Two Grapes. Chavo's an evil, insecure man. Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. I don't like Chavo, so I agree with you. Oh my God, it's my co host of Sweet Child of Time and musician intro void. It's Steve Barnes. Oh my God, Chavo's a sweet, evil, insecure man. Oh my god, it's my Bickle, my Ding Ding, uh, Joshua Jacobs. Joshua doesn't like Chavo, so I agree with Joshua. The womb in which I came out of my mother. 
Chavo was an evil, insecure man. And finally, Lil Cory's BFF and roommate, Shane. I don't like Chavo, so I agree with you. And that's it. I've been James. Uh, and I don't like Chavo, so I agree with James. I'm Sean. And we've been uh, not shuffling sweaty the times. deck. No, we're sweaty times. The, 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 oh, say it, you son of a bitch. Sweaty time <laughs> pro wrestling. Uh, bye bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Penis, 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 pen